Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to take a walkthrough of the ship's medical spaces. These spaces are largely unchanged throughout the ship's career, uh, and you're going to notice that they look very similar to the medical spaces you're used to on shore. The only major difference is the various spaces are built around the armored barbet for the gun turret. So instead of being normal square buildings like you see ashore, it's got a curved uh, bulkhead in many places. This is one of the first videos we're shooting with our new microphone. So thank you. Some of you made donations specifically earmarked for technology like this. Uh, I'm not sure how well it will work because we're still recording inside of a steel box instead of a recording studio. But hey, that's the whole charm of the channel. We've got an actual Iowa class battleship as our soundstage. Anyway, thank you for your donations. Uh, it really supports the channel. Let's talk about the medical spaces on the ship. Throughout New Jersey's career, there were usually at least two full doctors assigned on board. These doctors were actual medical doctors who were also officers in the US Navy. Smaller ships don't tend to have their own uh, large medical facilities or doctors on board. Most ships will have uh, a small space and a hospital corpsman or two, which is uh, kind of like a military version of a nurse, but supercharged. These ships had medical facilities, not just for their own crew, but also for other ships in the battle group and potentially uh, they could be made available to civilians ashore if needed. The spaces don't change much throughout the ship's career, but the type of men using them does. During World War II, the ship's crew was made up of nearly 3,000 uh, young men, 18-year-old uh, draftees who had lived through the Great Depression, and many of them may not have ever seen a doctor before in their life. So joining the Navy, they were getting a lot of first-time checkups, dental care, and uh, medical procedures that they may have never gotten as a civilian. By the 1980s, when the ship was brought back into service with a roughly 1,600-man crew, the battleship was much older than other ships in the fleet. And uh, the technology and equipment on board was also so a lot of crew members were older because they had served on similar systems earlier on in the ship's career. In particular, the chief petty officers were only older and of the spectrum for naval service, and many of them had served, um, some of them had served all the way back to World War II, many of them had at least served in the uh, 1960s during the Vietnam War when gunships like the World War II era cruisers and battleship New Jersey herself had still been in use. Because of the age of the sailors, the doctors on board found themselves doing way more uh, age-sensitive procedures, such as colonoscopies that you wouldn't be doing with a bunch of 18-year-old kids. There's also a lot of blood pressure checks, and you need it too. I've got the uh, chronology of events for the ship in 1987, and it says that uh, 695,000 cans of soda were consumed by the ship's crew in that year, and 240,000 candy bars. The medical department saw 8,466 sick call patients out of a crew of 1,600. 72 patients were admitted to the ward, 3,273 immunization shots were given, 11,136 laboratory procedures were done, 1,037 physical exams were performed, uh, and this seems like it's on the low side, but most of 1987, New Jersey spent pier side or in dry dock, uh, so the sailors had access to uh, the medical facilities at the Long Beach Naval Shipyard. 1,543 x-rays were performed in that one year, and 5,734 prescriptions were dispensed. You'll notice as part of this space being uh, tied into the rest of the ship, 
the yellow beam in the overhead is for transferring ammunition between the forward turrets and the after turrets down Broadway. We mentioned it in some of our other videos, but uh, you see it again here. Theoretically, a Stokes basket type stretcher could even be attached to this to move patients. We also have different examples of stretchers here that medical personnel can grab if needed. This is the newer type roll-up pattern that would have been carried in the 80s, and there's the older folding type behind it. I'm not sure if both of these would have been carried at the same time. However, the brackets for both are right here. This just shows some of the age of New Jersey and how uh, new technology was added to the old, and it's quite possible that uh, these brackets were just left in place and not used when this particular style of structure went out of service. Anyway, uh, as a sailor showing up for sick call, it's going to be very similar to if you were to go to the doctors today. And you'll probably notice a lot of these steps are very similar. The first thing a sailor would do is come up here to medical records uh, to have his files pulled so that he can take them with him to the doctor and the doctor can add to those records. We mentioned laboratory procedures before. Here is the battleship's laboratory where blood tests and other samples can be tested. Next, you'll end up in the waiting room, complete with magazine rack, but also with ship service things like the flooding controls. From the waiting room, you go into an examination room. And this space should look pretty familiar, like any other doctor's office. It's even got the uh, old style lights in the overhead. Notice, in addition to these, also has the shipboard style battle lanterns, which we talk about in a different video. But these are plugged into the ship's electricity, not to get power, but to sense when the power goes out. So if we lose electrical power, these battle lanterns each have a pair of six volt batteries in them, dry cells, and they'll kick on automatically. You notice there's a couple around. Uh, they're not the brightest things in the world, but they will continue to illuminate the patient for the doctor if the lights go out. From here, you might be sent in for an x-ray. We've got a lead vest, and back here a dark room with a cabinet that really functions more as a pass-through window or uh, plates that are being developed on one side and passed out on the other. There's also a lead bulkhead here for the x-ray technician to stand behind. While most of the ship has watertight bulkheads like this one, the medical spaces have broader doors without a bulkhead so that you can uh, wheel gurneys or wheelchairs through. This is the battleship surgery space. And if you come and visit us in person, you can go through the various drawers here, which are loaded with period equipment. After a surgery, a sailor might have to recover here in the ward. There's an autoclave room back there, a nurse's station here, complete with a television that's attached to our ship service uh, television system. There's a pharmacy for dispensing medicine. And there's even a head back here just for the sick call patients. So this head is like any other one on the ship. Uh, it's not in use anymore, we use it for storage. But 
there's one major difference. At some point in the 1980s, they added a whirlpool type bathtub in here for medical patients. I'm not sure that any of the other Iowas got one of these. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comments section down below. Tell us how you like the new mic. Uh, tell us about any shipboard medical experiences you might have had in the Navy. The battleship receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. We also receive support from viewers like you. And uh, many of you guys clicked on the link below in the description that took you to our GoFundMe page. And when you donated money, you earmarked in there that you wanted specifically better sound equipment, better this, that. And so that's how we were able to buy a new microphone for recording these videos. We really appreciate the support. And as always, remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you're notified when we put out new content. We try to release several videos every week.